thank you, Dr. Arunandar, for uh, these kind comments. And uh, of course, uh, I agree with Dr. Athiya that uh, in conditions wherein you have a lot of problems, a lot of sanike, then you have to, uh, you know, uh, modify your surgery. Maybe you have to do sequential surgery if you are uh, uh, combining with coronal procedure. And the basic idea, we did a study also that has been published, and the basic idea of doing this study was to know whether uh, when we fix the lens, whether it's sturdy enough to sustain other procedures, like, you know, when you're doing a DSEC procedure or keratoplasty, then it should sustain that procedure, the fluctuations in anterior chamber, the fluctuations in the uh, intraocular pressure, as well as uh, the vitreoretinal surgery, which also has been done by Avninder and many others. So it's definitely a very good procedure, and as Avninder told that uh, this procedure given by Dr. Geber and Dr. Amar is a very good procedure, and uh, we all are fond of it, so that's why this large series. Uh, I'll be discussing with you about uh, glue dial with corneal procedures. Meanwhile, uh, while Rajesh gets on with the presentation, uh, any questions from the audience uh, uh, regarding complication and uh, the last talk on com complicated yeah, situations? I have a question. Yeah, sure. So when you're doing, uh, how much of anterior vitrectomy you do? And uh, near the sclerotomy, do you go indent and do the which is clearing near the yeah, sclerotomy yeah. sites. As a, as a posterior segment surgeon, I prefer to do an almost total vitrectomy. Uh, because uh, once you do a total vitrectomy, the chances of CME, and by chance if you have a pigment dispersion or vitreous hemorrhage, it clears very fast. So I tend to remove, in all my cases, the posterior hyaloid. I don't do a depression or remove the uh, vitreous from the sclerotomy site. The reason behind it, if you remove uh, the vitreous from the sclerotomy side, <coughs> then uh, the chances of leakage or hypotony increases because vitreous also acts as a plug to prevent the uh, leakage. So uh, scleral depression, I do until the equator, but I don't do a scleral depression. And uh, for anti-segment surgeons, how much of anti-vitreous they should do? For anterior segment surgeon, uh, I'll say ki they can enter with the sclerotomy and do oh, uh, yeah, keep the probe in the pupillary area and do as much vitrectomy as uh, they can. More the vitrectomy, better the results are. Better, lesser the pigment dispersion. If you have uh, pigment dispersion or vitreous hemorrhage, it clears up very fast. About uh, glued IOL with the corneal procedures. Now, what corneal procedures we think of? Basically, uh, the reason why I'm presenting it that there are two basic procedures. One, you can have a full thickness corneal procedure or you can have a partial thickness corneal procedure. And most of the situations when you have to do these uh, glued IOs are uh, difficult situations in which there's corneal decompensation. So most of the times it's either penetra penetrating keratoplasty or a T-sec procedure. Uh, the indications, as uh, we all will know, that it, it can be fakia with endothelial decompensation, fakia with corneal scars, or pseudophakia with corneal decomposition or a scar when the IOL is in unacceptable position. Now, what is IOL in unacceptable position? This is just a terminology I have uh, given here because uh, I have seen in many of the cases wherein the IOL is not in a proper position where it should be, like a descended PC IOL which is tilted, uh, partly hanging in the vitreous, so one haptic, you know, stuck onto the iris tissue, or you have a PC IOL in anterior chamber, or you have an anterior chamber IOL with IOL surface very close, almost touching the endothelium, or some tilted AC IOL or a PC IOL. So all these conditions wherein you have this IOL in a very unacceptable position. As I said, these are the two major procedures that can be done apart from, of course, PDEC that uh, Dr. Adhya was telling. I'll be discussing about DSEC and PK. Now, DSEC procedure can be done either single stage or two stage. Now, if you have an aphakia wherein you have a, a minimal fibrosis or a, a less of sp uh, anterior synechia, then in that case you can uh, very well uh, combine the two procedures. You can do the glute procedure and simultaneously at that time you can, uh, it's good to place the uh, donor lenticule. But if you have a bad anterior synechia, wherein you have to release the synechia, there's a lot of bleeding sometimes and sometimes there's fibrous ingrowth. In those cases, uh, we may have to do a sequential surgery. Now this is an example of a single stage procedure. Now, this is the donor lenticule. 
which has been placed on the uh, artificial chamber. The microkeratome is used to cut the anterior lamella and the posterior donor lenticule is being fashioned with the help of a circular cutting disposable <coughs> trephine. This is the case wherein uh, the IOL in the anterior IOL is in the anterior chamber and uh, the glue dial is being done. I have slightly modified the technique uh, which suits me. I mark the sclera at 1.5 and 3 millimeter positions from the limbus and then I make two radial incisions and then by use of crescent blade I uh, make a flap and an adjacent groove. The basic idea of doing, doing that is to ensure that the uh, scleral bed and the groove is in the same plane. Now this is uh, scoring of the Desmets membrane, Desmets and endothelium. And uh, the diseased endothelium has to be removed. The stripping completed. And then the IOL needs to be removed by enlarging the incision. Now this is an anterior chamber IOL which was tilted very close to the, to the endothelium causing decompensation of the cornea. <coughs> and this is a multi-piece IOL which is being introduced, the tip of the haptic held with the forceps, lens fixing forceps and exteriorized. And uh, one haptic exteriorized, the other haptic being exteriorized. And the haptics will be tucked in on both sides. And the flap repositioned. Now, once uh, both the flap is repositioned, the conjunctiva is also stuck onto the sclera by the use of fibrin glue. So you don't have to use any suture here. And uh, then is the time to place the donor lenticule. The fashioned donor lenticule loaded on Bucin glide and is being pulled. The Bucin glide has been placed here temporarily and from nasally I'm pulling the donor lenticule. But uh, this is the end of the surgery. Now you can also do a two-step procedure wherein uh, you have a lot of inflammation because uh, you don't want to jeopardize the success of the graft because uh, in a case wherein there is a too much of uh, synechia and uh, fibrosis and vascularization, it's always better to get the eye stable, uh, <coughs> reaction-free, so that when you place the donor lenticule, the, uh, there is minimal damage to the coronal, donal en endothelium. Now, the same procedure, as I said, and... Uh, now, in these cases, what happens is that sometimes you have a bad uh, corneal epithelium, edema, so you have to debride the corneal uh, epithelium, and then your visibility improves. And uh, you, whatever manipulation you have to do, whatever sinica release you have to do, you do it at the same time. Now, this is with the help of, since uh, it's an FAK eye, so a multi-piece IOL, is being placed with the help of an injector. And uh, the same way the, uh, it is the eyes closed and we go to the second procedure. Now, this is post-SFIOL uh, post DSEC. Now, this, is, uh, this lenticule is being produced, it's an ultra-thin uh, lenticule that is being produced by double-pass technique. So what you do with the corneal uh, tissue, you make one pass, check the uh, thickness of the cornea, and then do the second pass. Mm -hmm. And there are nomograms for the second pass, uh, and th this is uh, with the moria. And then you have a very thin uh, donor lenticule. This is just to show that the cut of the donor lenticule is central. Now this is the IOL that has been fixed earlier. You can yourself see it was a very uh, complicated situation wherein there's so much of virus atrophy and uh, so it was uh, wisely decided not to do the procedure in a single sitting. And uh, 
it's a, it's a fibrosed uh, decimates which is being stripped off many times there is a synechia and when you remove the decimates the synechia gets also released from the periphery and uh, then now we have changed to making the main tunnel nasally so that what you do is that you just place the uh, donor lenticule like this and pull it from your temporal side so it's very easy you don't have to go like this it's easier to pull it on your side now this is the uh, Buisson glide with the swing the donor lenticule is being uh, pulled into the anterior chamber and it is very easy to do it you just have to place it nasally pull it on your side and that's the end of it now this is a condition uh, wherein uh, we did glue dial with full thickness keratoplasty in this case uh, uh, the video that sh i am showing now we could have done a desec as well in this case but there are many conditions wherein you have a lot of fibrosis in the stroma wherein desec doesn't help so you have to do a full thickness keratoplasty now in a full thickness keratoplasty you cut the donor lenticule and it's an open sky when you are pulling you make the flap initially before cutting the uh, host uh, bed the host cornea and uh, once you are through with it then you cut the host cornea now it's an open sky technique so you just have to place it's very simple you just have to place the iol haptic with the lens fixing forceps you pull it now this is cutting of the recipient cornea and the iol haptic being pulled on one side and the same can be done on the other side now in these cases you have to be very careful once you have done it and once you have done the keratoplasty you have uh, put initial 48 sutures then you should check whether there is any vitreous in the anterior chamber or not that's very essential and uh, a lot uh, was being discussed that tricot is so essential but then yes it uh, we have to be very careful in putting tricot because uh, just one or two drops is enough otherwise it will go behind and one can have intractable glaucoma if one is a steroid responder so this is the uh, end of the surgery now this is the routine post operative treatment that we give antibiotic steroid and uh, tear supplement this was one study which was published in jcrs wherein uh, the glue dial technique was combined with uh, full thickness keratoplasty and desec procedure this is a post operative picture of glue dial with desec this is glue dial with pk and we did a study by, to see the as dr avnindra was telling that you know the uh, glued iol is more sturdy and more uh, the evasion is more strong than sutured iol and we just want to do a ultra microscopic study and we let's uh, see so this is a sutured iol wherein you can see with the movement of eye the uh, eye lens is almost touching the iris tissue it is uh, it is not very stable it is a sutured iol but uh, when we go to the other one sorry when we go to the other one it's a glued iol you can see with the movement of uh, eye the iol is rock solid in its position it's not moving much while in sutured it was moving too much and uh, because of this pseudo forgottenness as dr avnindra was telling we can have a cystoid macular edema so to conclude uh, i would like to say that uh, the two techniques can be combined very easily and the iol remains stable and in most of the situations there is hardly any risk of iol related graft endothelial damage thank you